What's cracking everybody, Zerfell Rose here, bringing you some Pokemon Go Battle League content. In today's video, we're going to be talking very briefly, even though the first rule of Fight Club is you don't talk about Fight Club, we're talking about the Fighting Cup remix because it's a limited meta and I do these videos for a reason, right? So, um, as usual, we do these groups, uh, do these meta breakdowns by groups. There's a very small condensed meta because it's literally everything is one type. Everything's fighting type and there's certain bands. So no Buzzwall, no Hisuian Sneasler and, or no Sneasler and, um, no Koma O and no Hakamo, which fair, but sucks. Um, and just real quick before we get into it, I do all of this stuff early in my Patreon Discord, so while you're seeing this on YouTube, you could have seen it last week or maybe three weeks ago, depending on how early we get the news. I'm already looking at stuff for the end of the season, so um, come on in, check us out. Link in the description for the Patreon Discord. Fantastic group of people to be a part of. Also, we're going to be able to get all of my team's tips, metas, uh, analysis, everything, basically, before it gets even touches YouTube. Um, so yeah right good salesman right good pitch i totally got lost at the end anyway you can also check me out on metafy if you're interested in coaching um, i do offer that as a service as well but i mean the patron gets you access to the whole discord plus it gets you access to coaching discounts too so you pick what you like if you want to do it at all and whether you do it or not i still appreciate you just for being here so thanks so much and we're going to get into this meta breakdown right now starting with number one toxicroak this is literally the toxicroak cup it's literally just going to be play toxicroak or play things that beat toxicroak which by the way um yeah there's three in the whole meta there's three things so yeah if you want to play an anti-toxicroak team just throw a throw Polyrath, Shadow, Polyrath, and Galarian Farfetch'd on your team, and at least you'll be able to beat the Toxicroak, right? It's ridiculous. If y'all aren't going to ban Buzzwool after giving it to everybody, you're going to ban the Dragons, I get that. But if you're also going to ban, um, you know, you're going to ban Buzzwool and you're going to you're going to ban his, you know, Sneasler, at least go the whole mile and ban Toxicroak, because Toxicroak just makes the whole meta just a mess. So, anyway, we'll talk about it. You know, you're, everyone's going to have Toxicroak on their team. This is a given. You should just plan for it. No one's going to be having uh, a team without Toxicroak. It would just be silly. So, Heracross, Sneasler, Sneasler's little baby, I should say. He's sweet and Sneasel. I get the, the freaking Sneasel, man. I get the names mixed up. It's all right. It's, my brain doesn't work at 1130 at night. And then um, Galarian Zapdos. These are the only four Pokemon in this whole cup that actually are, uh, resist fighting. So all teams will probably be centered around these four Pokemon, especially the first three because Galarian Zapdos is a hard thing to catch. But, um, you know, Heracross, Toxicroak, and Sneasel are all going to be on a team because they resist fighting type. You know, if you're in a cup full of fighting types, while it would make sense for everything that you play to resist fighting. So, I mean, the reason why these are so strong too, the subtypings, uh, you know, bug on Heracross. Heracross is not super high up in the rankings. It's actually kind of further down here. Um, way, way further down here. Well, is it? No, it's from number 14. Um, Megahorn still does a fair amount of damage, even though its entire moveset is resisted by Toxicroak. Because of Toxicroak's lack of bulk, a Megahorn would probably KO it. So, um, but, you know, like everything else, it will lose the Toxicroak in the one shield, so you're going to have to just kind of figure out a plan and stick to it when it comes to dealing with Toxicroak. Now, the thing is with Sneasler, or Sneasel, is it has access to Aerial Ace, and its close combats hit like a truck. The only problem here with Sneasel is that it doesn't have Shadow Claw like its big brother Sneasler. Instead, it has Poison Jab, and I don't think it really... Yeah, it has Rock Smash, so you're really just going to be running Poison Jab, now, the nice thing is, though, is because nobody's really going to be running Lucario because the dragons aren't here, um, the poison damage is only going to be resisted by Toxicroak, and Toxicroak already would resist the fighting damage anyway. So, Sneasel is going to be a very popular pick in this meta. It does very well if you save it with some shields. It can just roll through, you know, an aerial ace can just destroy everything. So, um, that's going to do it for this page here. So the next page you're going to be like the the specialty fighters right the fighters that don't rely on fighting type damage to do their work so that's going to be things like larian farfetch which has brave bird which will one shot anything in this cup guaranteed no problems asked 
or no questions asked with no problems right so it also has fury cutter so it's going to get to the brave birds really quick and it has leaf blade which is probably one of the best bait moves that you could get low energy bait move with brave bird this thing is set up for success and i wish i had one and i'm not going to build it because it's way too expensive i think i have to excel it or something but anyway regardless uh throw is in here y'all know it from last time it's got zen headbutt for the fast move it's also got body slam so it does have you know reasonably okay move set for this cup um but literally the only things that throw can beat are the poison and fighting types so it beats sneasel and toxicroak and then the next thing on the list is Mankey. so it's really not going to have any use for other than those two things which will be on every team so you could probably get a throw you don't even have to double move it because you're never going to use focus blast you could just literally power up a throw and have zen head button body slam and be fine um polyrath though is something that i enjoyed playing in the last cup because i was expecting the dragons i had the ice bunch and i was expecting um lots of toxic croak so the ground damage from mudshot added up very nicely i might go back to it this uh this rotation to be completely honest polyrath did me very well and it was just really because of the freaking dragons that really was causing the problem for polyrath now that they're gone um honestly it's probably going to do even better so look to uh look to use your shadow polyrath if you've got one i would definitely go for the shadow though because i think that there are some matchups that it has to be shadow for it can't two shot certain things without having a shadow boost so combuskin uh damage comes off of usually is going to come off of peck don't confuse it for blaziken which is number 10 here combuskin is quite a bit further down here uh, down to 21 peck is it's a novelty it's really not that great flame charge and rock slide are nice coverage moves but they're really not doing much so i wouldn't expect to get very far with combuskin and don't even bother playing the uh don't even bother playing the chestnut i don't know why machamp is on this page i think i might have left it here by accident because <laughs> he's supposed to be on the next page uh but chestnut i mean don't it, it, the whole move set is, re is resisted by tox truck gets just obliterated by sneasel it's just not a good time so the next page is going to be the pure fighters and that's going to be basically the things that rely on fighting type damage like counter have some maybe some coverage charge moves but really just rely on the fighting type move set that they have so machamp counter frost chop and close combat you're not running rock slide in a meta filled with uh fighting types you could run bullet punch if you wanted to to try and bypass the um the poison typing and the bug typing to do neutral damage against most of this stuff except polyrath and blade like you're not going to do um like bullet punch is not a bad call i think so it's a nice tech option especially if you're not seeing a lot of polyrath or blazikens um hitmonchan has a has basically all the elemental punches has power up punch so as a shadow that thing is lethal and i like it a lot i'm not going to build it because it's a lot of dust but i like it a lot surfetch something you've probably already got gets brave bird gets leaf blade night slash gets a really nice array of moves that you could use but definitely going to run with uh brave bird if you're playing it machoke is you're going to want it purified so if you've got one from evolution cup that's purified has return that's going to be the machoke you want to run because that normal type coverage is going to be neutral against the whole entire meta here i do believe so that's going to be the ideal uh kind of machoke if you're going to run it karate chop gets the return fairly quickly so it's not bad uh, Blaziken's here because it's got Brave Bird. Blaze Kick does neutral damage to both, mostly everything except for Polyrath um, and other fire types. And having that Brave Bird, you know, the ability to one-shot anything in the cup with shields down is just too good to, to bypass. Um, and then we have Primate, which has Ice Punch, has Night Slash, also has Cross Chop if you play it, if you got one uh, during the Go Battle Day a couple seasons ago, but you're not going to play that here. Um, you're going to want to aim for, it looks like, Close Combat and Ice Punch and i mean the matchups themselves aren't super important to be honest this cup is really small and you're going to learn the matchups very quickly and what you can and can't get away with and to be completely honest i really don't see much merit because it's literally well, who's got the toxic croak aligned on what it's going to be on the team somewhere everyone's got one so be ready um and I'm pretty sure that's going to be it. But let's check this last page just in case. And this is going to be... Yes, that's right. These are going to be the four things in the cup that you don't want to use. Because they're all weak to fighting. 
And Lucario had a really nice niche in the last meta. You actually saw your boy Fel Rose here do a video with Lucario last season when we had the fight, or was it two seasons ago? Whenever the hell we had the fighting cup. Um, and it functioned really nicely because it beat the dragons. And that was its only purpose. Now everything in this cup does fighting type damage and it's going to get mauled and you're not going to want it. So all, all of these, they're just going to get obliterated. They have no good way to damage other fighter types. You know, it completely Tuck's Crypt destroys them all. Um, even, you know, Stomp from Beware doesn't really do that much. And, you know, Pangoro and Scrafty don't really have anything to do here. So don't play these. Please don't do it. Um, I don't have any cores for this meta because it's all fighting types and it's literally just flat three fighting types together and try and win because <laughs> that's all you're really going to be able to do. So that's going to do it for this fighting cup remix analysis. Not much of an analysis, but you know, at least you get to see everything that's going to be relevant in the meta and kind of understand how everything's going to interact. You know, you're not going to see much more past what's covered in this video. And if you do, it's spice and good luck to you if it is. Let me know in the comments if you're looking forward to the remix fighting cup. I mean, honestly, probably just be better to stick to open Great League. But that's beyond me. You do what you like. I'm going to play a little bit of both, see what happens. And I will catch you all in the next video. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.